When the Transformers were first introduced, the decision was made that the cars and trucks were the good guys, the Autobots. Autobots, transform! <laughs> Roll out for the power station! The bad guys, the Decepticons, were the planes and everything else. Let's find out! <laughs> okay, Reflector. Let's see what you can see. Initially, Hasbro had licensed the toys from Takara's Microman and Diaclone lines. And to help with toy line's growing popularity, Hasbro's marketing team was able to also acquire the rights from other toy companies for transforming robot toys and added them to the Transformers toy line. One of these toy companies was one of Takara's biggest competitors, Bandai. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help us bring you more content like this. Now, Bandai had just recently acquired the makers of the now famous Macross toy line, Takatoku Toys, who had filed for bankruptcy following the fallout of their following series. When Hasbro saw these toy lines, they licensed them to toy shelves outside of Asia under the Transformers name. From Special Armored Battalion Dorvac came the Autobots Roadbuster and Whirl, the Deluxe Insecticons Barrage, Chop Shop, Ransack, and Venom came from the Armored Insect Corps Beatrice toy line, and finally the Macross Super Valkyrie VF-1S figure was recolored to become Jetfire. Tired of losing battle after battle in the sky, the Autobots create the ultimate robot jet. Now, if you probably noticed, the animation model used is very different than the appearance that we got in the original G1 cartoon and comics. In the cartoon, Jetfire was renamed Skyfire and was introduced in the episode Fire in the Sky. He was voiced by Grimlock's talented voice actor, Greg Berger. It seems the time has come for me to make the change from science to war. On Cybertron, he was a scientist and Starscream's friend before the war. The two left Cybertron to explore the stars before coming to a then uncharted planet, Earth. A polar windstorm caused him to crash and he was buried in the Arctic before being found by the Decepticons. They recruit him due to his friendship with Starscream. Hail Cybertron! Hail Cybertron! After seeing the truth about the Decepticons and their treachery, But you have treasure! He switched his allegiance to the Autobots. Crush him and all the Autobots! I take no orders from you. I am an Autobot now. In the Marvel comics, they kept the name Jetfire but used the same animation model as Skyfire. He was built by Shockwave, along with the Constructicons. Using the power of the Creation Matrix, Shockwave had given life to the Constructicons, but before Shockwave could use it on Jetfire, Optimus transferred the power of the Creation Matrix to Buster Witwicky. Buster used this to rebuild Jetfire to help the Autobots in saving Optimus Prime and in defeating Shockwave. Once Optimus was restored, he used the Creation Matrix to fully give life to Jetfire, making him a full-blown Autobot. The introduction of the character bears the question, why did they alter the appearance of Jetfire, and why change his name in the cartoon? The cartoon series Bible has a note next to the character profile stating, Jetfire has been transformed into Skyfire with a different model due to legal reasons. Do not use this character unless necessary. Since he was introduced in the cartoon first, the comics had time to follow suit with the animation model. There have been many theories, but it is safe to assume that Takara was not happy about Hasbro's use of their competitors' toys. They intended to bring the cartoon to Japan, and they knew that they would not be able to sell the Jetfire toy there. Here in the US, Macross was brought over as Robotech by the company Harmony Gold, 
and that toy mold could not be sold under that name, at least initially. Harmony Gold would pursue a multitude of lawsuits with anyone who uses Mecha with resemblance to Robotech. Being that the toy was originally a Macross toy, Hasbro was forced to make changes to how he was portrayed in fiction. Come on, guys. There's a battle out there. Then let's get involved. <laughs> as for the character's use in G1, Skyfire was mostly used as an Autobot transport. Next stop, Peru. Due to legal constraints, he only appeared in eight episodes of the cartoon. After uncovering the original recordings to his Season 1 appearances, we have now learned that he was going by the name of Jetfire. You knew him? His name is Jetfire. You knew him? His name is Skyfire. Since all instances of his name being changed had to be re-recorded. Jetfire, are you warm enough to transform? Skyfire, are you warm enough to transform? The episodes Fire in the Sky, Fire on the Mountain, and A Plague of Insecticons were forced to be aired in late of December of 1984, with reruns appearing in proper order in 1985. Hey! Stop bugging me! On a side note, the animators made the mistake of not using Starscream's Cybertronian jet in Fire in the Sky's flashback. A rushed production schedule made worse by the legal problems of Skyfire meant that the animators were not able to go back and fix their mistakes. In the Season 3 episode, Dark Awakening, several jets using his animation model were blown to bits by the Quintessons. But it doesn't mean that Skyfire was killed. Some of the other jets also resemble Powerglide and the Aerialbots, who later appear in other episodes. In the comics, Jetfire also became a background character before meeting his end with many other Transformers at the hands of an underbase-powered Starscream. His appearance in Dreamwave comics would betray him as an Autobot scientist who did not believe that the core of Cybertron was in fact Primus. While battling the Fallen, they would end up waking Primus within the Well of All Sparks, where Primus' hand would destroy the Fallen. He would later appear in his familiar G1 animation model, with a battle mask resembling his G1 toy, as he battled the supercharged seeker, Sunstorm. The comics from IDW would have Jetfire as a regular member of the Autobots, first appearing in the miniseries Stormbringer. He usually would look like his G1 animation model, with variations depending on what toy was on the shelves at the time. The Dinobots would take dinosaur alt modes when they came to Earth in their starship, the Skyfire. For all it's worth, Jetfire, or Skyfire, has been a staple in Transformers lore long after G1 ended. Jetfire was part of Generation 2's toy line as one of the Autobot Cyberjets. Surprisingly, he is sold as an Autobot, but has a Decepticon symbol on his toy. This toy was later sold in Japan under the Robot Masters toy line under the name R-Blade. As you can see, this new Autobot jet is colored to look like the original G1 Jetfire toy. The 2001 Robots in Disguise toy line featured a Decepticon jet named Skyfire sold in a two-pack with tow line. While he did not appear in the anime, it was cool to have a toy use that name. In the Unicron trilogy, Jetfire was introduced in Armada as the brash second-in-command of the Autobots, who transforms into a space shuttle. He could also combine with Optimus to form Jet Optimus. He would receive an upgrade in Transformers Energon through the spark of combination, allowing him to power link with other Autobots. In Transformers Cybertron, he would get yet another body upgrade and would speak in a Nebulan accent. Also in Transformers Energon was an Omnicon named Skyblast, clearly an homage to the G1 cartoon Skyfire. In fact, he went by that name because Hasbro had lost the trademark, much like they did with Shockwave at the time. In Transformers Animated, Jetfire was designed very differently, 
along with his brother, Jet Storm. The two of them can merge into Safeguard. In the live action films, Jetfire was an old Decepticon seeker in Revenge of the Fallen. Decepticon! Decepticon! Left on Earth for ages, he woke up and switched sides. Who's winning? Well, I change sides to the Autobots. He gave up his life so his parts could give Optimus Prime a jet powered boost. Let's roll! Which enabled Optimus Prime to take the Fallen's face. In the Align continuity, Jetfire was present in the game War for Cybertron, working with Starscream aboard the space station Trypticon. When Starscream decided to join Megatron and his Decepticons, Jetfire refused and escaped to join the Autobots. In 2013, Hasbro prepared to release a G.I. Joe Sky Striker with jet boosters as G1 Jetfire as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, proving that to this day, Harmony Gold is consistent with copyright over the Matt Cross Valkyrie, they sued Hasbro to prevent the toy's release. However, after being dismissed in court with prejudice, Hasbro secured the rights to continue to use the character Jetfire or his cartoon counterpart Skyfire without the risk of Harmony Gold coming after them. Part of the Generations toy line, under the banner Thrilling 30, was a leader-class toy that has a jet mode that is more like the original Jetfire toy, while the robot mode is more like Skyfire's animation model, with a battle mask if you prefer the original toy's look. It's an awesome throwback and update to the character. So I hope you've enjoyed this bit of history on the character of Jetfire. Or is it Skyfire? We got it covered, Jetfire. We got it covered, Skyfire. If so, like the video and subscribe. Personally, I prefer to call him Skyfire and would like Hasbro to use the name again. But what do you think? Should Hasbro use the name for the character again? Or should he always be Jetfire? Or do you think of Jetfire and Skyfire as different characters? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I want to thank my patrons for all your support. I've got more videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. How dare you assign me to God duty, Megatron? I am Starscream the Mighty! Have a good time playing Crystal Alert, Screamer! Bye! I'm <laughs> sorry.